magnificent, but still more, something gigantic that I myself have only just seen in a flash of intuition. Perhaps the reason for our fate, for our being here today. I want to read to you the passage from Dante that he cannot remember because it's a terrific passage. Ulysses is in hell. He has been cursed for any number of reasons, but he is among the deceivers. And Dante comes to him in hell and they speak. When I set sail from Circe, who more than a year had kept me occupied close to Gaeta, before Aeneas called it by that name, not the sweetness of a son, not reverence for an aging father, not the debt of love I owed Penelope, his wife, to make her happy, could quench <coughs> deep in myself the burning wish to know the world and have experience of all men's vices, of all human worth. So I set out on the deep and open sea with just one ship and with that group of men, not many who had not deserted me. I saw as far as Spain, as far as Morocco, both shores. I had left behind Sardinia and the other islands which that the sea encloses. I and my mates were old and tired men. It's his last lecture, too. Then finally we reached the narrow neck where Hercules had put up his signal pillars to warn men not go, to go beyond that point. On my right I saw Seville and passed beyond. On my left, Ceuta had already sunk behind me. Brothers, I said, who through a hundred thousand perils have made your way to reach the West during this so brief vigil of our senses that is reserved for us. Do not deny yourself the experience of what there is beyond the sun. Behind the sun. In the world they call unpeopled. Consider what you came from. You are Greeks. You were not born to live like mindless brutes, but to follow the paths of excellence and knowledge. With this brief exhortation, I made my crew so anxious for the way that lay ahead that I could have hardly held them back. And with our stern turn toward that morning, morning light, we made oars our wings for that mad flight, gaining distance, always sailing to the left. And they go on and on until they go too far, too close to the mountain of purgatory. And as another, that other being God, wills it, they are dragged down in a whirlpool and Ulysses wakes and finds himself in hell. So why? Why does Primo Levi need Ulysses so desperately? To remind himself that even in hell, what it means to be a man. To remind himself that even in hell, there is still the life of the mind. There is still the desire for knowledge. There is still the desire for excellence. To remind himself that he can't give up, even though everything conspires to tell him that he must. And he not only needs to remind himself, he needs to teach it. He needs to tell the piccolo. He needs to tell Jean, just as Sonny must play piano, no matter what. He can't not do it. It's what he does to remind us of a past, a past simultaneously painful and liberating. You want to know why I do it? That's why I do it. I hope I can only do it as well. Thank you so much.
Are, are there are there questions? I know I mostly read to you, but are, are there questions? Everybody's okay? Yes. Why King Arthur? You know, it's interesting. I went into it for different reasons than I came out of it. I went into it desiring a kind of transcendent, transcendent nobility, uh, a kind of, of beauty. And I came out of it suspicious of, of the very narratives that I desired. I came out of it wondering, and there's a wonderful moment in Monty Python and the Holy Grail in which, um, and, and I know I'm on iTunes, whatever, but I, I've got to say it, in which a peasant looks at King Arthur and says, well, we know he's king because he's not covered with shit. And, uh, and I, I, I went into it desiring the king, and I came out of it desiring the peasant who makes that comment. I came out of it wondering, you know, what, what are the kinds of privileges that, that allow Arthur to be written that way? Who is it that would want him privileged like that? I mean, because I don't really believe Arthur ever existed. Uh, you know, who would desire such narratives? Why would such narratives be written? And, and to begin asking questions like, who's left out of such narratives? And, and what do we make of those who are left out of such narratives? Uh, you know, what does it mean to be a knight? And, and, and whose victimization is, is created by a knightly class. So I went into it for, for, uh, for a kind of idealism, and I came out of it maybe with a different kind of idealism, I'm not sure, um, or, or maybe just a, a greater suspicion. But, um, but, but I don't think of it the same way I did when I was, what, uh, 26 writing my dissertation. Uh, it, was, it was a very different thing then. Um, but I think I went into it for, for a kind of idealism, which I, I, I no longer possess, and, and an idealism about history, which maybe I no longer possess, though, though I still have certain kinds of ideals about history. Other questions? You've all been very patient with me. Thank you so very much. I gather there's food outside, so enjoy. and. Um, and uh, for those of you in my class, please make sure that you sign up outside so I know you are here so you can get some extra credit because I have bribed you. And, uh, and thank you all so much for coming.